After a kid nuts reads their analysis about Roswell just losing his makeup. Or should I say his marbles? I don't know. I was trying to say, okay, it's been more than eight seconds. Roswell's losing his shit. Fun fact, you can't really swear in the first eight seconds of a video. Or until it gets like flagged for like limited ads. I don't know, it's stupid, but hey, let's see what Mr. Echidna has to say. Let's go, Ram. Yeah, that's not happening. Aside from being one of the best dialogue-heavy setup episodes I've ever seen, this will also be the final setup episode of the season. Yet, oh, it was still packed full. It's looking like, how many episodes we have left? I think like four, right? Let's see, let's see, let's see. Reaser season two? Yeah, we have four episodes, and we're going to line up right in time for season three. It's looking like every episode from here on out is just going to be like, basically whale subjugation in terms of just hype. Just like every episode, pop off, pop off, pop out, great finale, conclusion, then we go into season three. Full of memorable scenes. Garfield becomes the shield saint. Rom and Amelia discover Yuri. Puck returns for the seventh time. Blurred. Elsa fights Garfield. Frederica fights Garfield. And even though Subaru was absent for most of the episode, when Petra needed a head pat the most, he was there. That's right. Like I said, though, this was a- One more time. Pedo neat. At the most, he was there. Need. Yep. Like I said, though, this was a setup episode, meaning we have a lot more to look forward to, especially because we got like four different cliffhangers at once. I don't know about you guys, but next week I'm expecting to witness some of the greatest fight scenes of all time. Let's go. And you know what I despise, though? And this is not a ReZero problem. Every anime fucking does this. It's like they always build up a scene, like a hype fight is happen about to happen, right? The exact, for example, the Ram versus like <laughs> Roswell stuff, right? Everything is building up, the soundtrack is popping up, but it's in the back of my mind, it's like, you're not gonna show me the fight. <laughs> you're just gonna fucking just switch to a different scene as soon as the climax is about to happen. And even during the fight, thank you, old drag with the three month of tier one. Even during the fight, <laughs> What I fucking hate is how they never focus on one fight. They'll do a little bit of it, and then they'll switch scenes to a different fight. That shit happens in One Piece a lot. I, I fucking despise those kind of fights. It's just like, let me be immersed into one single topic at a time. But you have like seven different shit going on, and you just give me a little crumb of like different sections and swap, and it's just like, ugh, ugh, I hate that structure. Expecting to witness some of the greatest fight scenes of all time in the new episode of XR. This episode began exactly- Yo, what the hell is this anime? X-Arm? In the new episode of XR. This Unironically, this looks better in failure frame. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. In the new episode of XR. This ep it just looks like failure frame. This episode began exactly how every episode should. With Otto. The three idiots have some of the funniest interactions in ReZero, and I found it rather adorable how Garfield treats Subaru like he's the coolest guy in the world. Yeah, it is nice. The Chuni Garfield glazing Subaru, probably thinking that the fucking Subaru pose is also cool too. And then Otto and Subaru, just like, they're self-deprecating jokes. They're like, yep, we're cooked. Yep, we're cooked. Now we're able to like joke around with the situation we're in and not be completely hopeless. We have a bunch of friends just to like have fun with. The reason these two shields are the perfect weapons for Garfield is that his unarmed strength is more powerful than most melee weapons anyway. So if he held a sword, it would actually... Garfield with the Ryuken, the dragon sword. Would actually lower his DPS. I love the OST they used for Rom's conversation with Amelia. It fit perfectly and really helped emphasize the importance of what was happening. Previously, Rom only respected Amelia because Roswall ordered it. But finally, for the first time ever, Rom's chosen to do so using her own free will. That's right. Got on one knee. Up until this part, Amelia was trash <laughs> in Ram's eyes in terms of competency. And I agree. No one else can deny that. It's simply how the story is told. But now she's making a comeback. Now she's looking like the actual fucking candidate for the throne. Pendant of Roswell, thus establishing a new dynamic between herself and Amelia. But as soon as it gets a little spicy... Blur that shit. I'm gonna get limited ads. Roswell conveniently interrupts. It was kind of funny how Rom literally just asked Amelia to save Roswell. But the second he shows up, Amelia prepares to fucking kill him. I liked how confident he was in his entrance, though. He walked up to them like an absolute chad, but as the conversation progresses, that confidence fades away after Amelia sticks up for herself. That's right. Roswell realizes that he can't just, like, gaslight this half-elf anymore. 
right? Like, up until this point, she was so, quote-unquote, stupid that Rosalind could just say whatever and she'd never push back. But now, Subaru is rubbing off of her, right? He even makes that claim. And now she's, like, talking back with actual facts and logic and Rosalind cannot just manipulate and gaslight. I would like to point out that in the source material, Roswell is repeatedly referred to as a devil by- And who else is a devil? Well, it was the warlock of melancholy, right? But the devil of melancholy, I think, he was referred to the devil as well. I mean, th then again, so is an elf, right? Elves are also referred to as devils back in Lugunica, as people will be like, half elf, no half devil. By the narrator, which is ironically the exact insult Roswell himself directed at Hector last week. Mm -hmm. So in case you were still questioning Roswell's status as a villain, there you go. He's a villain? I don't necessarily feel that way still. I understand that he's an antagonist in the current story right now. But I truly believe that he's one of the most important assets in the Emilia camp. And while he is clashing against us as antagonist, I, I do believe that in the future stories, and maybe I'm wrong, maybe Rosal says fuck it, and he is just completely against us for the rest of the story after this. But I just feel like if we can overcome this, make him realize that there's different possibilities, and he forgoes the book and understands that this Natsuki Subaru guy may actually be Jesus Christ, like, he gonna be a great ass in our team as a teammate, like, a, as like a... A friend, a supporting member. Although, on the bright side, it looks like his daughter turned out just fine. Anyway. Who the hell is this girl? What anime is this? This is like three years ago, so I got no clue. Turned out just fine. Anyway, up until now, Rom has- That is a very popular color choice, though, for heterochromia, I've noticed. Blue and gold. What is Kurumi's hair color? Data Live Kurumi. Not hair color, I meant eye color. Kurumi is red and gold. Okay. Not blue and gold. Maybe I'm just crazy. Just fine. Anyway, up until now, Rom has always been loyal to Roswell. So if anyone's wondering why she suddenly chose to betray him, well, she probably saw last week's episode. <laughs> Roswell and Rom have always appeared to have a more than friendly relationship. Yeah, this is sus as fuck, but he's like mending to her horn thing, right? This plot point has been hinted at repeatedly throughout pretty much the entire series. <laughs> Daily duties. Yep, memory snow. Memory snow with content. I remember that. <laughs> yes, it was a bit obvious, but this week's episode finally gave us some confirmation. I have come to rob you of your obsession with the witch of Greed Echidna. To the man she cared for, who was madly, who was mad with love, she confessed her own love, hoping to. Huh. So like, Ram does love Roswell with all her heart. But she's been groomed and she's been manipulated. All this setup, she was forced to take this vow after her horn got cut off and she had like, she gonna die pretty soon. And then this dude shows up out of nowhere and just saves her? Way too convenient. Some confirmation. As we know, Roswell only has heterochromic eyes for one woman. Yet Rom was able to spy on him using clairvoyance. To borrow someone's vision with clairvoyance, Only both second. the target and caster must have matching wavelengths or it doesn't work. Normally. But matching wavelength enough isn't really like a sign that they're in love with each other, right? Couldn't you, ha couldn't you be friends? Couldn't you just be like acquaintances and be friendly enough and have matching wavelengths? Or it doesn't work. Normally, it's easy for Rom to synchronize with lesser beings like animals and mob beasts, but a powerful mage like Roswell should Fluctuate. be able to prevent her from using clairvoyance on him as long as his heart is closed off to her. So after successfully using Heart is closed off, so I guess... Okay. If the heart is open, then I guess that does imply affection, maybe some sort of romantic intent. Clairvoyance on Roswell, what Rom felt was joy, because it meant Roswell's heart was open to her. This highlights- Yeah, and he opened her heart up. Donutted, put a fucking hole through it in that one episode. Yet another contradiction of Roswell's ideology. He claims to only care about the witch and nothing else, but deep down, he's got feelings for Rom too. Hmm. Yes, Echidna, but Ram. I mean, all I have are assumptions and implications, but if people are saying that, like, yes, Roswell has opened their heart, his heart, and he does love Ram more than just, like, an acquaintance or friend, then okay, okay, there's something going on between these two. Even though this freaky-ass clown fucking groomed and manipulated this girl into being in this position. Feelings for Rom, too. Now, should we ship this? 
<laughs> Should we shift this? Um, why not? No. For Ram's sake, no. No. A relationship with Roswell would probably be an abusive one. Plus, Roswell, yes. she's too young for you, bro. Yes. Anyway, I hope that whole clairvoyance part made sense to everyone. What doesn't make sense is why Rom has a clown fetish. I won't judge, but if she wants to fuck a warlock, even Ghoul Dan would have- I, I don't think Ram has a clown fetish, but it's more like the person that saved her, seemingly, right, and was there for her, <laughs> was like a clown, therefore she has- develop a new taste. Been a better option than Roswell at this point. I guess Rom developed a dependency after relying on him for mana every night. Yeah, and it sounds like this is like intentional. Or maybe she's just a big fan of his Hector cosplay, I don't know. Realistically, it's probably a type of Stockholm Syndrome because mm -hmm. Roswell reveals that he's responsible for the destruction of Rom and Rem's homeland. Yeah. At this point, it seems like Roswell is literally the orchestrator. And hold up, hold up. Ram heard that, right? Roswell uh, revealed that information. Ram heard that, right? Ram is now aware that everything happened back at the Oni village is due to Roswell's fault. And despite that, Ram will still love Roswell because Stockholm Syndrome, the most abusive relationship possible where the abused one will fucking do mental gymnastics to justify why everything is okay because at the end of the day they're too like bound to this person that has manipulated them and the absence of them is more terrifying than a future without them that could lead to a healthier fulfilling life Land. at this point it seems like roswell is literally the orchestrator of every tragedy in existence <laughs> seven deadly sins seven deadly sins gabby attack on titan seven deadly frames down here uh oh uh oh, we, we can't go over there. I'm gonna get banned off this platform again. Traitor of every tragedy in existence. You think JFK was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald? More like Lee Harvey Roswald. American history memes that I have no familiarity with, but I do, I have heard that um, JF Kennedy was assassinated. And then what was the other shit? I watched Oppenheimer with my girlfriend last night, and JF Kennedy was one of the few people that was actually for Oppenheimer when he was getting shit on and being like a scapegoat, so that's kind of cool lore, I guess. But did Roswell orchestrate the attack on Ram and Rem's Oni village? I doubt it. The dialogue was very vague, even in both novels. Even if he didn't orchestrate, he probably, the book probably, like, told him that this shit's gonna happen. You should be there, take Ram and manipulate her and take her because she is a tool that's gonna be used to slay the dragon Volcanica. Or maybe they're gonna have a kid and that kid it will be Roswell, Roswell M. Mathers, right? The descendant of L. Mathers, and, and that one with the only blood. Who knows what kind of powerful being that's going to be to kill the dragon. But my interpretation is that although Roswell has no connections or loyalty to the witch cult, he mm. knew they would attack the Oni yes. village on their own. Yes, the Grimoire told him, and it was the perfect opportunity. Own, yet he did nothing to stop them, thus making him partially responsible. Remember that everything Roswell does is according to his gospel. So although this season of ReZero has been building him up to seem like the ultimate villain, he's really just the ultimate simp following order from the book true right the ultimate villain is pandora <laughs> roswell is simply a dude that is bound by the words of his book and he's just there for the long con right he's not a villain he's just an antagonist a misled one and after this straight bet if subaru wins i think that roswell will be a great asset to our team his wife who gave him. His obsession with the witch dictates his every thought, and 99% of everything Roswell does is predetermined by the gospel's orders. In this case, it probably- Which makes him kind of lame, right? There's, there's two parts to this. I do respect the insanity it takes for a person to read. It's like, it, like, like a book tells you, all right, you're going to die. Or like, you know that one run where Subaru figured out for the first time because Roswell told him and he just threw away his life because he's like, yep, it is what it is. And then even though it won't be me, another me will be in a different timeline. That's crazy. That's a crazy pill to swallow, right? That's truly just showing his madness. But besides that, it's like, damn, you just fucking reading off a book, huh? You have like no own critical thinking or logical deduction. You can't figure out how to do something without the help of the book. And then if the book does go away at the end of this arc, right? Because that's what Ram's goal is right now. Wonder what the new reformed Roswell will be. If Roswell is still present after Arc 2, sorry, Season 2, it'll be interesting to see what his characterization will be as his growth 
of being able to make his own choices without relying on the book. He told him to rescue Rom, but because it didn't say to stop the witch cult's attack, he just let them burn down the rest of the village and turned a blind eye to it. Easy. Probably the yellow one if I had. What's up with that, bro? Why does he always open that shit with the blue eye closed sometimes? What What is that? I had to guess. Because he could have easily saved the village but chose not to, Roswell is partially responsible for what happened. Although, if his gospel specifically instructed him not to interfere, then that would make Echidna responsible instead. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's the Whoa, 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 whoa! Hey, hey, hey! You're slipping, bro. You can't just say that. Listen, I know the grammar is given by Echidna, but now you're implying that, like, the contents of the book is written by a certain person, and we've been trying to figure out, like, who updates this shit, right? Biko stopped functioning a long time ago, and if you think about it, did Echidna do it because of her sick little social experiment? I think it makes sense, right? And now for Roswell, it, with this line, sounding like Echidna's the one giving the little patch updates whenever she wants to. Hmm. But she would do that? But for what? I don't know. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I think that Echidna has the actual true Tomb of Wisdom. And the two copies were given to Biaku and Roswell, the Grimoires, and every other defect with the Gospel. And maybe Echidna is the mastermind behind it all. Instead. Now, if that's the case, then it would add a whole new level of significance to Rom's objective this episode. It might appear that she's battling against Roswell, but... It can't be Echidna, though, because she doesn't know about current world and archbishops. And you bring up a very good point, because I believe that there's a possibility that it is Echidna without her having knowledge, because, like... The updates are not determined really by her knowledge of the world, but rather through some fucking AI system. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know, because like she has no knowledge of the outside world. How the fuck could you possibly give these detailed instructions for the true path for the future? I don't know. Well, Echidna also has a Tomb of Wisdom, right? She doesn't need to have knowledge of the fucking... I don't know how the shit works, but... I would like to believe that it is Akinna giving the patch updates, even if she's not aware of the outside world, because she may have the Tomb of Wisdom, or maybe there's like a whole different set of fucking, I don't know, <laughs> AI system that just understands. Truthfully, she's really battling against Echidna in competition for Roswell. Puck versus Roswell is a fight I've always wanted to see, and also something I've speculated about quite a bit. I've also speculated about what might happen if they didn't fight each other, but instead fell in love and had children. Yo, Shane Dawson, is that you? Hold the fuck up. Wait, 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 wait. Ignoring what I just said, in terms of raw magical... This motherfucker also mentioned about how Otto and the cat... Remember, Echidna's the first person to remind me that, like, Otto and the cat first lovers, and then we went to find that Jake Z 123 video, and it's like, oh my god. Happy actually confirmed it. So. <laughs> power. Puck is stronger than Roswell. But in terms of power, raw power, but then techniques, Roswell is better. In terms of accuracy and control, no? Roswell is stronger than Puck. Hold up. Puck is stronger than Roswell. But in terms of accuracy and control, Roswell is stronger. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. I thought this chart was comparing these two at the same time, but no. This is Puck's skill and power. This is Roswell's skill and power. Roswell is much more skilled than Puck than Puck. So in a fight between the two of them, the result would be a draw. And when I say draw, I mean the maps of the world would have to be redrawn. Damn! I know I cut the music just now, but it wasn't a joke. That's actually what happened the last time these two fought. They the maps have to be redrawn. The actual, like, ecosystems, the lands, the geography is being changed. Like, this is some fucking Aokiji versus Akaino shit from One Piece of, like, Fucking punk hazard just like being well that shit was like infinite fire and ice clashing right i don't know but like we are in that territory of changing landscapes where the map has to be redrawn because of their fights they literally reshaped the fucking continent but this time is different roswell is injured and puck isn't alone with True. rom on his side puck appears to have an advantage although he can't borrow amelia's mana anymore regardless the true loser of this fight is going to be either the sanctuary or everyone that hasn't read the light novel and has to wait another week to find out what happened <laughs> aside from that it's hard to say who the winner would be since both um maybe it'll just be a draw maybe there doesn't need to be a winner but i believe that whatever happens we are still going to come out on top and the we is like subaru's group right so i, I feel like whatever clash happens here uh, maybe this noble fall, but I don't think we're gonna like lose this run. I don't think the rabbits are gonna show up and just kill everyone. Even if they do, maybe we have a solution for it this time. I'm not sure.
Both Puck and Roswall are pretty much equal. Unlike Puck and Reinhardt, Ooh. I wouldn't even call that a fight. Sword. That's a VTuber. Yeah, that's pretty much how it went. Speaking of Reinhardt, though, I found it ironic how Garfield said no one can run from Reinhardt. Mm. Right before Elsa ran from Reinhardt. Or meeting someone who ran from Reinhardt. Yeah. But the idiom does. But but Elsa's broken. She seems to literally have like multiple lives or has like ultra regeneration based on that one break time episode where her wound just fucking closed up after Mady said, Elsa, you have like a habit of like picking your wounds. Does exist for a reason. Because of his divine protections, it's impossible for Reinhardt's attacks to be evaded. So Elsa was hit directly, yet she survived. She tanked that it! That isn't supposed to happen. She we tanked it! We also watched Beatrice turn Elsa into a shattered pile of unicorn shit. That was the craziest fan service. I didn't know it's possible to do fan service like this. Like, it's just like a, basically a sculpture of her torso and her titties, but damn. But she survived that too. Yeah. Elsa was already scary enough as she was, but it's become evident that her fearlessness is probably the result of a secret ability or some kind of trick she uses to escape mm -hmm. death. I've read a lot of interesting theories in the comment section. Well, the cloak thing is interesting because, yes, when Elsa didn't take damage by Biko, she had the cloak on. After she took the damage and came back, she was cloakless, even though the rest of her clothes were on, to imply that maybe it's an item thing. But I think that there's been other situations where, like, I don't know, I feel like the healing part, maybe, maybe, maybe it's both combined. Maybe the cloak is important and she does have ultra regeneration but some of them I can refute. It's true that Elsa's cloak is able to block a single magic spell, which we saw- Yeah, we saw this shit too in Arc 1. ...in Season 1, but Beatrice casted a multi-layer barrage of attacks that literally shattered Elsa's body to pieces. Her mm -hmm. cloak might have blocked the first attack- and I think, again, like, it, there's two things at play. It's not a- it's not a yes or no situation. It's not a mutual exclusive- it's like the cloak or it's Elsa. I think it's both. But after that, it would have been irrelevant. I've also heard suggestions that Elsa may possess a divine protection, but I'd like to rem I think that the more you see you show Elsa, more people will watch Reason Zero because obviously sex sells, right? I <sighs> I think Elsa might actually be done this season. Like imagine if Elsa survives again. Like I would love that personally, because design, like her design is <sniffs> But I fear that this may be the end of Elsa at a season two. Remind you that in season one, episode three, Elsa voiced her jealousy after noticing Felt's divine protection, implying yeah, that she wind. wasn't so fortunate to have one herself. Does that imply it? I envy you. Yeah, envy. Remember, I mean, I don't think how much these subs matter, but remember, what envy is when you're like. You long for something someone else has and you don't, while well, jealousy is you do have it, but it's your fear that's taken away. Um, what, a, what about a blessing, right? There's divine protections and blessings and there's two separate things. Saying that she wasn't so fortunate to have- Also, fucking- It said blessing of the wind here. And I'm pretty sure a blessing and divine protections are two different actual terminologies and it's not synonymous. Elsa said, ah, blessing of the wind. You were loved by the world. One episode three, Elsa voiced her jealousy after noticing Felt's divine protection, implying that she wasn't so fortunate to have one herself. Are they not different? Someone told me. Someone sourced the fucking like ReZero wiki and was like, blessings and divine protections are actually two separate things. Elf. So if she doesn't have a divine protection, how does Elsa keep surviving all these fatal attacks? What I can tell you as- Elsa's also regressing. There's multiple Elsas. Oh my God. Every Elsa we've seen, it's, it's like fucking nine separate Elsa siblings. As a novel reader, is that Elsa's true power is her ability to hide her nipples. On a serious note, her mysterious ability might be enough to give her the advantage over Garfield. And aside from him, I don't think any of these other characters could even stand a chance against Elsa. Except Beatrice, but as we know, she's, she's chilling. Busy being the ultimate introvert. And of course, we're left with another giant cliffhanger, forcing us to wait an entire week to find out what Subaru says next. Hey. Here comes the rating, 10 out of 10. Beatrice, if you don't want this, then dodge. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that again. This episode concluded volume 14, meaning there's only one left to adapt, and I know it might- Damn! In the final volume to adapt, the next four episodes is based off of this, and the entire cover is just Beatrice. Okay.
All right, this is gonna be significant. Be depressing, but the reality is we've only got four episodes left of season two. I'm sad that it's ending, but this arc's conclusion really is the best part, so at least we've got some amazing episodes waiting for us. Nice. Also, everyone at White Fox who contributed to Volume 14's adaptation deserves to have their dick sucked immediately. Not only was it extremely faithful to the source material, but every episode was close to 30 minutes long, and that's something that wouldn't- Yes, every episode has literally been 29 minutes and 31 seconds bro it is unreal that re-zero white studio white fox has gone out of the way to pad their watch time at the cost of, i'm pretty sure they're losing money doing this shit right i'm pretty sure they are there's a reason why everyone else is like a standardized like 20 what is the average like anime episode length right it's all standardized like 23 minutes and like 40 seconds roughly it's, it's kind of within that ballpark but white studio white fox went out of the way to not even play their openings or the endings at times right they give us the cinematic experience that 30 minutes of pure content and it truly shows you that like this studio and this anime it is a passion project it is a labor of love this is not a fucking min max just bottom of the barrel shitty isekai that katoka pumps out to meet their bottom line no this has love poured into it and you'll love to see it wouldn't be possible without an abundance of hard work and love for ReZero. If my math is correct, this episode is a 10, 10 out, of out of 10. And the highlight for me was surprisingly the Roswell. art. So far, the art has been the worst thing about this season of ReZero, yet I thought it really shined in this episode. There was a bit of cut dialogue, but as usual, really nothing of dire importance was omitted. It was just a really impressive setup episode. I can only hope the payoff episodes that follow it are just as good. Yes, really sir. Really for next week, and I hope you guys yes sir please go give mr echidna a like on the video here's the link check out his channel if you haven't and that's right we're entering the finale not the finale yet but you know the true end game of reaser season two we got four episodes left hopefully we're gonna end off with a bang and i'll see you next time